Oh. In last week's episode, Noah and Matt started to settle into their month-long canoe trip. The first few days were hot and buggy. Just bug parts and blood. But the beautiful landscapes and wildlife did not disappoint. After navigating some unmarked rapids, they made it to their first milestone and the biggest lake on the route, Black Joseph. Welcome to the land of wild rivers. This morning we're having Bushwhackers Oats, a bomb of a thousand calories. This is no joke. You really need to be committed to eating this much oatmeal in the morning. One cup oats, quarter cup protein powder, quarter cup powdered peanut butter, quarter cup dried cranberries, and a quarter cup of crushed walnuts. I also added a scoop of powdered greens. It'll all soak right in. Is the bubbling normal, would you say? Yeah, that's the process of the bushwhacker's oats accepting the water. It does that in your stomach as well. It's gonna be really hot out there today, and one of the biggest concerns for us is getting heat stroke or any sort of heat exhaustion. So two things that we're gonna keep on board, very accessible, sunscreen, and a lot of extra water. We're gonna be drinking a lot of fluids today. We're gonna to be doing frequent stops to have swims to cool off and make sure we don't get too exhausted today from the sun. Over the next 100 kilometers, we'll be traveling across two significant lakes of the Labrador Plateau, Black Joseph and Atikinak Lake both requiring us to take significant crossings through open water, which will expose us to prevailing winds with little shelter. We'll need good weather to make this work. If not, we could be stuck on one of the many islands for days. The goal is to cross the height of land into Quebec's Romaine watershed in three days. Echo! And she bounces all the way around to where we're trying to go, actually. And that's a, that's a technique used by some voyagers. They, say, they do use the echo technique, and they go to where the last echo sound was. Is that true? No, it's totally false. I just made that up. Echo! Shit, now we're going this way. <laughs> Man, I just thought of a six, seven-syllable <laughs> phrase for the haiku. The last echo of Lac Joseph. That's deep we're gonna hit the end of Black Joseph today. And that would mean the last echo too. Exactly. Yep. Oh, you can see the fish here. Yeah? Yeah. Just going around too on the sunscreen. It's uh, Super, super, super sunny day. So I think every couple hours we're gonna layer back up here. It's kind of our routine is to top off the waters and layer up on our sunscreen. We probably cut out about 10 kilometers of paddling distance by taking this passage that sort of dead ends and there's a narrows on a peninsula and we're actually just gonna portage our gear across it because it's only about 100 or 200 meters and it'll save us a pretty substantial amount of paddling. Um, so that'll probably be our next, our next break point. There's this potential brute uh, peninsula that we could cross, which is about 200 meters, and we weren't sure if there's going to be a portage or not. But from our first look here, there's a trail. So that is a great sign because this is some thick bush. Some quick Energizer gummies. These are energy pills. Take a couple of these before a portage, and you'll be feeling all right. Oh yeah, man. 
Yeah, this is definitely a trail. This looks well worn. Sweet. That might be the easiest portage of this trip. Likely will be. <laughs> <laughs> That's the unfortunate part. So this is gonna be the crossing, which is about six kilometers. We're gonna go off our main route, which hug the shoreline because the weather seems pretty decent. So we're gonna beeline it to that far beach over there, which is about a six kilometer crossing, which is gonna be the largest of this trip so far. To the north is the monster arm of Lac Joseph, where you can't even see the end. It looks like the ocean. The prevailing winds come from that direction, so in any stormy weather, the wind here would just be ripping down this corridor. We got really lucky with the weather, guys. Rarely do you see such perfect weather for big lake travel. There is a caribou on this beach we're coming up to. He ran across. He ran across. I can't talk. I'm too excited. He ran across. He gave us a quick glimpse of himself, but then he just took off into the woods. We're gonna go check it out. Look how massive the tracks are. Like I know they're like exaggerated a little bit from the sand. Uh, so we're blowing out around the hoof, but the caribou have massive feet. And their, their hooves splay way out. And that caribou would have been part of the Lac Joseph caribou herd, which is not a migratory herd. They're actually stationary in this area and they are endangered. We are very lucky that we had the opportunity to see that. That was very exciting. One of my dreams for this trip was to uh, hopefully see a caribou. Because I'd never seen one in person before. And we knew there was a population in Lac Joseph, and we just saw it. <laughs> it's a Lac Joseph manatee! Station Hadro Hydrometric Station. There's a water line that goes from here down to the lake, and there seems to be like some kind of a pump in there, the sucking up a little bit of water every now and then. But um, I would assume that they're using it to measure the water levels in the river or the lake. I don't know. It's all just all part of the plan. They're monitoring their. Uh, Monitoring their power supply, essentially. We are at our campsite for tonight. And this one might be the best yet. There's a strong wind. There's flat ground. And there's this. Our uninvited dinner guests. We feed on the spaghetti. You're into spaghetti. They feed on us. Thus, the circle of life is completed. Oh yeah, that one's a just a beef spaghetti. Instead of spaghetti noodles, I use rotini just because uh, when you dehydrate spaghetti noodles, well, they stay kind of pointy and they can puncture the bags. So I just use rotini. Parmesan cheese. We did about 41 kilometers today. Saw a caribou, we finished Lac Joseph. We're camping on a beautiful spot beside the rapids here and we're both exhausted. So I think it's gonna be an early night for both of us. Maybe a quick swim before bed, but that's about it. See you tomorrow.
This morning we'll be traveling through the channel that connects Lac Joseph to Atikinak Lake. All the water in Lac Joe narrows into the small passage, which is released into the lower elevated Atikinak Lake. We have no idea of how powerful the section is going to be, but we do know there will be white water. These rivers with a lot of water, it's the current seams you you want to be really aware of. Rather than rocks and shallow water, the current the current seams will throw you off course sometimes. You just gotta always brace when you see a change of current. We're coming up on a big set of rapids up here. On the map, this is about a kilometer of lines across the river, which means white water. And it's pretty loud. We were thinking about running this right shoreline and then trying to pop into that eddy over there, but the more we looked at it, it's a super tight situation. And one mistake or one bad glance off a rock would shoot us back into the current. At this point, it's still a blind corner. We don't know what's down there. So I think on this one, we're just gonna play it safe and we're gonna line the right shoreline. That's probably our safer bet at this stage in the game. We're slowly trying to pick apart the river eddy by eddy, not getting too far ahead of ourselves and scouting around every blind corner. You good? We eventually get to the final set that was about a kilometer long with some big white water. All right, let's have some fun. But after a full scout, we agreed that we could do it. Right away we hit a wave and started to take on water. There was a big hole downriver, and we had to make it to river left for us to have any chance of making it. Now it was a game of not sinking the boat. So we just danced with the devil there. We almost sunk the boat. It was one of those decisions we, we made to not put the spray deck on. And 
we almost got ourselves in a very sticky situation. That was close. One false move or one more wave on top of the boat, we would have sunk it. We almost got away scot-free other than one thing. And that was the solar panel. I had it wrapped up in a dry bag beside me. I guess it wasn't wrapped up enough and water got in and I poured a cup of water out of the bag. And the solar panel's fine, but there's an external hard drive in there that got a little wet. And I'm a little nervous that that thing is in trouble. We use that to recharge our gear. And this is also Alex's, so I, I feel very bad about this. And uh, I really hope that we can dry it out and it works again because that kind of sucks. We came around the corner on this lake and there's this monster power line really close to the water too. We might actually get underneath it. These power lines are part of the 1969 contract between Labrador and Quebec, connecting Churchill Falls, Labrador to the Hydro-Quebec power grid. The intent of the Newfoundland and Labrador premier, Joey Smallwood, was to develop the natural resources of the big land. Due to Churchill Falls remoteness, cash flow and politics, Smallwood had his back to the wall and agreed to very favorable conditions for Quebec. The contract gave the right to Hydro-Quebec to purchase the majority of Churchill Falls hydroelectricity until 2041 at a really, really low fixed price. As of 2019, the contract has yielded approximately $28 billion in profit for Quebec compared to $2 billion for Newfoundland and Labrador. As you would expect, Newfoundland and Labrador is pissed and wants some of that cheddar. Matt, how do you feel right now? I feel my watch is going backwards now. <laughs> yeah, like a little on edge, <laughs> to be honest. These things are not all that high. You kind of want to huddle, huddle low in the boat as we go under. Probably just as surprised to see us. <laughs> I took a walk around the corner and the wind is super strong. So I don't know if we really want to be dealing with that big bay crossing there. But there is a little sneak around here we can do that's only like 50 meters to connect this uh, point that we're on with another little cove. And I think if we can make that, it will burn a lot less energy. The external hard drive that we flooded today, we had it in Matt's bag for the last set of white water. It looks like it turned on by accident in Matt's bag, which means it works. So we are not down an external hard drive. Let's do one more test right now just to make sure. Power on. We're back in business. Today we learned two valuable lessons. Put the spray deck on in big water and keep the electronics in a safe place. Both of these slip ups were symptoms of rushing. Patience is a virtue that's magnified when stakes are high. And luckily, we were only subtly reminded of how quickly things can go wrong. Tonight our minds are on the weather as conditions are starting to look worse for our big lake crossing of Atikinak Lake tomorrow.
Things are changing. Overnight, it was a strong northwesterly wind. The weather has shifted and it is really cold and rainy this morning. Totally different living now. Good morning. Welcome to new weather. Yeah, this ain't the uh, tropical beach vacation anymore. I woke up and one point the tent was just shaking. Holy cow. Yeah. That's the key to a good seal on a dry bag is the sumo slam. <laughs> Today we hope to finish the big lake paddling. We're trying to line ourselves up for the height of land crossing and that means we need to do about 35 kilometers on this lake today and the wind is definitely going to play a factor in that because we have a couple large crossings where this direction of wind will not be favorable for us. We'll have to make a lot of good decisions out there. Safety is number one, but the goal of today is to get to the start of our height of land crossing for tomorrow. As we came around the corner, I saw a wolf looking at us on the shoreline. What about up here? It's nice and flat right there. Came around the corner, and turned around. Yeah, so probably a wolf. Really cool. So far it hasn't been too bad because we've been on the leeward side of islands, but we're about to get exposed into the main section of the lake. The first section is going to be alright because we're going downwind, but once we get around the next island, we're going to be totally exposed to the rest of the lake. The wind is coming from the northwest. So we're going to go up this way tailwind and then here we're gonna to be totally exposed all the way to here so we're gonna reassess our situation once we get to that island which might mean a hunker down for a bit We literally could not go any further, and there's the beach. Yeah. Perfect spot to wait out this wind. Dude, we have so much real estate. They just need a minute. It is windy and we need to go right across the section. The wind's got to die down quite a lot before we can do that. This is when you got to be patient. So we've gone as far as we can. We're windbound on an island. But luckily we found this nice beach to wait it out.
there's a huge dead birch tree up in there. Ooh. So at least one other canoe party has been uh, windbound on this beach before us. Just go up there to harvest some firewood and there's an old saw cut limb up there, which is kind of cool. Parmesan cheese, thyme, and crushed fennel. Woo That's a nice rock. Straight up. That's a good combo, isn't it? Yeah, that's some gourmet bannock. Yeah. You could, you could sell that at a, like a pizzeria as yeah. an appetizer. We've been looking at the weather, monitoring the waves, and it's about six o'clock at night now. So we've been on this beach for about six and a half hours. And it looks like we're gonna stay here tonight. And we're gonna get up early tomorrow to do the crossing then, hoping that the waves are a little smaller and the wind's a little lighter. The wind and the weather dictates your ability to travel. And you need to be able to be flexible and patient in times when you can't travel. 